name is Libby Down Under. Now, Libby is short for libertarian. We've uh, spoken mainly today about uh, social and um, cultural issues, but uh, libertarianism is uh, mainly about the, the size and role of government. So uh, with that in mind, I'd like to get your opinion on what you think that, you know, uh, the role of government should be with regard to, you know, tax, spending, welfare, health and education. So I, Libby and Liberty is also a uh, female name. So that's the other reason why I uh, took that uh, name on on social media. So again, I describe myself as a conservative uh, libertarian. Uh, would I describe myself as a pure libertarian? I don't think I could describe that. Um, libertarian principles are important, um, but it's not the be all and end all. Um, I'd like to apply libertarian principles to my politics, but again, libertarian principles is not the be all and end all, and I suppose that doesn't make me a pure libertarian. So, um, on economics, so uh, on taxation, I would so taxation in Australia federally, I would very much prefer that, and I've written a, an article on this for Liberty Works. I would like to see, in the ideal world, all federal tax replaced with one income, one flat income tax. So let's say that's 25%, 25% across the board for everyone's personal tax liability and corporate tax liability. Um, you know, one flat tax rate, um, which means um, a much smaller Australian tax office because, um, you know, it's too big um, and I believe we have federal tax legislation I think it's it's either 11,000 pages or 14,000 pages it's one of those two you know back in the 50s I think it used to be a thousand pages or um, uh, something less than that now it's 11 or 14 it's um, thousands of pages um, and what value does that add to the economy not very much so um, you know, it's very ideal to argue for a flat tax, but in my view, that's the best way to go. Um, it's not just good for businesses, it's good for individuals. Uh, I mean, I I get a bit uncomfortable with saying taxation is theft. Um, so, you know, whilst there's the saying that taxation is theft and there's merit to making that argument, I would also make the argument that taxation is what makes civilization. So how do you reconcile the two? Well, in my view, a flat tax is the way to do it. And of course, it's not just tax that's a concern, it's also the welfare state. Um, if I, again, I'm being an idealist, but I, I tend to be supportive, at least in principle, of the idea of a negative income tax. So, um, uh, you know, you. I mean, my version of uh, the negative income tax or NIT would be um, only s people who are earning below or aren't earning, uh, so earning below the tax-free threshold or not earning anything, um, to cut out the red tape, all that waste of administrative costs that comes out of Centrelink, um, if all that can be um, cut out, to replace with, okay, if you're earning below the tax-free threshold or um, you're not un 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 unable to earn, you're not earning anything at all, you know, a, uh, a one type of payment where, um, you know, it's you're paid enough so that you can supplement your income or your lack of income so that you've got barely enough not to end up homeless or um, end up with chronic um, medical conditions, for example. Um, so I, I would be, I'm supportive of an NIT, but I'm very cautious about my support for that. Is there an easy answer for how we uh, do away with the welfare state so that, you know, everyone's self-reliant um, and, you know, it, you know, the job of um, taking, off, taking care of the less fortunate, the less well off, you know, that going back to charities, because that's what charity, charities used to 
to fulfill the functions of welfare state, then the government decided, I oh, know we're filling that role. So can we go back to the, those times? I'm trying to be realistic here. Probably not. Something else that I've argued is, and it's a bit anti-libertarian for me to argue this, but um, expanding our current compulsory superannuation system to not just encompass um, retirement benefits, but you know, in the event that you know um, education savings, um, you know, saving to be able to go to uni instead of having uh, the hex um, system we currently have. Um, Singapore, Singapore has a, a medical savings account system that they currently run. It's kind of like the super version, superannuation version of, um, sorry, a medical version of superannuation, and that works well in Singapore. Um, disability, so, you know, forms of disability insurance, unemployment insurance. Um, if we really need to, I'd like to see the welfare state being scaled back in a way that super can be expanded to encompass those areas that encourages people to be self-reliant. It's not ideal. Um, it, you know, again, can we go back to the good old days where charities did um, the welfare state's job really well at much less cost? Can we go back to those days? No, but I think as libertarians, we need to be more realistic and creative on this um, front in a way that works for everyone. Uh, the tax and welfare bill, it's, it's certainly a, a big problem in Australia and certainly one that's got lost recently, but also another big problem is the, the nanny state in Australia. For example, we have high taxes on uh, alcohol and tobacco and there's all, uh, obviously in uh, Sydney they have the lockout laws which regulate you know, where you can go uh, you know, uh, at night. Uh, uh, is, is that something that, that you're concerned about as well? Well and would like to see scaled back? I, yeah, look, as a general rule, um, if, if the government's involved and they don't need to be involved because consenting adults, consenting responsible adults are involved and no one's getting hurt, why be involved? Um, for the most part, the um, uh, uh, Sydney folks who uh, like to go to uh, the pub, have a good time um, in a civilised manner, not engaging in unlawful, illegal and disruptive conduct. Um, they're being punished under Sydney lockouts. And what has Sydney lockouts done for crime in Sydney? Not much. Not much at all. So I'm very much... And, and look, so there's that and then there's also illicit drugs. I don't... I'm not a fan of illicit drugs. Um, I, I don't think I would ever want to try illicit drugs. Um, but should I, you know, do I want government stopping people from, um, you know, touching, again, responsible, consenting adults touching illicit drugs? Well, I think the, you know, currently the war on drugs has created a, uh, black market for drugs that continues to expand the bigger the world of drugs gets and um, who wins in the end it's the drug dealers can we catch the drug dealer uh, excuse me can we um, catch the drug dealers well we haven't been great at but law enforcement hasn't been in here in other countries they haven't been great at catching the drug dealers they're still out there but if you want to cut off the drug dealers um, then I would support, in principle, legalising illicit drugs so that, um, you know, if people really need to touch illicit drugs, if it's, you know, if they do it in a regulated environment, it's like, um, I mean, if we, say, for example, we made paracetamol, Panadol, um, illegal, um, there will certainly be a black market for it and they certainly won't be regulated, clean, um uh, less severe, there will certainly be, um, but more turn into a more life threatening type of medication type of drug. Um, so that's my position on drugs as well. Um, not a fan of drugs, but we, you know, we need to be realistic, and the government needs to take a realistic approach on how we tackle the drug issue. The world of drugs clearly isn't working. Well
This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.